All right, guys, so. Any questions from homework? Yes. Oh, the gallons to pints. All right. So they they kind of they kind of help you figure out where to put the eight because there's an easy mistake to make to put the eight in the wrong place. Um, there's eight pints in one gallon. So if you let gallon, you can make like a little chart like this. Blah, blah, blah. So if there's eight pints in one gallon, in one gallon, how many pints are there? Eight. Oh, it's crazy. I just told you that, right? So in two gallons, there's how many? Sixteen. Sixteen. In three gallons, there's... Twenty-four. All right. Now, so tell me in general, how would I make this into an, a correct equation? A multiplication. Whatever what is, I do what to it? Okay. Whatever G. G is, I do what to it? G yeah, I multiply the G times 8 to make the P, right? All right, I like it. But I need to see an equation. Yeah, you set up like a conversion. I need the equation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I like it. So, I mean, this is the idea behind algebra. Uh, formulas are hard to work with because they're full of things I don't know. And what's life all about? A bunch of shit we don't know yet. Right? So once we figure out how many gallons, if I don't know how many gallons, but I know that however many gallons, if I multiply it by 8, I'll get the number of pints. That is just a rule. So a lot of algebra formulas, not all of them, but a lot of them are just rules. Uh, some of them conversion rules. Yes? I messed up AP. No, you didn't. You didn't mess up. Eight pints equals a gallon? No, that's not what it says. It's not what it says. Whatever the gallon, if there were three gallons, if there's, if G was three, what's the, how many pints is that? If I had three gallons, how many pints do I have? 24. 24. So what did you do to G? What did you do to three? You multiplied it by eight to get the number of pints. Oh, yeah. So just like feet and inches. How would I set up an equation for feet and inches? If I have three feet of something, how many inches of that is there? 36. So whatever the feet is, what do I do to it to make it become inches? Yeah, there's the equation. Right. Now this doesn't say there's 12 feet in every inch. This says there's 12, 12 inches in every foot times feet. What happens to the feet? So that's why 12 times feet is inches because the feet would cancel. So, so that's why your brain would think backwards. The, the algebra tells you what to do computationally. It doesn't, it's, not a, it's not saying what the conversion is. It doesn't say there's eight gallons in a pint. P is 8G because there's 8 pints in every gallon. Every one gallon is 8 pints. So you've got to multiply the gallons by 8 to make it become pints. You've got to break it up into 8 parts to make it a pint. How are we doing so far? Is that yeah, good. decent? No. Good, good. Doing this helps you figure out where to put the right, where to put the number. <laughs> or just thinking, if I had 3 feet, that would be 36 inches. So what did I do to the value of feet? I multiplied it by 12 to make it into inches. I've got to break every foot up into 12. So there's always going to be more of the smaller unit than the bigger unit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I like it, maybe. All right. Checking account. Say again? Checking account. Which one is that? 153. Next. Oh. Uh, but, wait, wait. So how do you, uh, what's the nice way to do... A bunch of negatives, and so you start with sixteen hundred and fifty-two dollars, right, in your checking account. That sounds a pretty good place to be. Uh, and then you have a seventy-eight dollar withdrawal, a ninety-one dollar withdrawal, uh, two hundred fifty-six dollars, and then you got this 
big old negative 638. So how do you guys do this kind of thing? What do I need to do to figure out how much money I got at the end? Addition all together, then subtraction. Yeah. Add them all together. So you could do the positives, add the negatives, mm -hmm. and then subtract, right? I mean, that's the way I think most of us would do that. Or you could just straight up do that, minus that, minus that, plus that, minus that. You're going to end up at the same place. Because you can add whatever order you want to. Is that cool? Yeah. This is really just, do you know how to do a check in a book? I don't know if anybody uses a checkbook anymore. Yes? you got to keep an eye on the bank, man. Sometimes they make mistakes. Oh, you've got to go back. They tell you, look back at section 1-3. Uh, exercise 79, and they tell you that uh, the rule of 72, if 72 is divided by the annual interest rate, the result approximates the number of years you need to double the investment, so forth. There is, is the formula is interest equal uh, principal rate times time, is that? They're asking you specifically to use the rule of 72. So it's an approximation. They didn't ask you to figure out exactly what the answer was. So it's asking you to use this rule, and they tell you which problem to look at in which section. So they tell you exactly what to use. Right? They didn't say use the actual formula to figure out exactly what it is, because we haven't talked about exponentials yet. So you know, this is an approximation, and they want you to use it. So the answer comes out close to what you got, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you got to be careful. If I ask you to use a certain approximation, but you, you use something else to get the exact it, you didn't do what I asked. So yeah, yeah you got to use the approximation. I like that. So, so on that problem, it tells you exactly where to go. Now, if you don't have the book, that's a problem, but you can just look on somebody else's. You can look in the Math Study Center. You can look in the library. Cool. All right. 129. I can understand what Oh, um, how many terms are there? There. How many terms are there? There are two terms, right? All right. How many terms are here? Four. Four terms, right? How many terms are here? One. one term, cool. That's one big ass term, right? So, what are terms separated by? What are terms separated by? This. Pluses and minuses, right? Mm -hmm. So, terms are collect are, are defined by multiplication, and then you add or subtract another term, right? Is that cool? Yes. So, you guys kind of know that, but you never, you, you might be never said that. That's exactly what's going on. That's why this is one term because there's no plus or minus anywhere. It's one big ass term. So, this. Is it more than one term, or is it just one term? One term. One term. Now, what would you say is the coefficient? 55. 55. 55 yeah. The coefficient mm -hmm. is the number in front of the yeah, variables. Variable. What's the coefficient of this? 12. 12. What's the coefficient of this term? 7. Careful. Negative, Negative 7. Negative 7. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah. You guys? Yeah. Would you? Because, of course, right here it would be plus negative, so that, that's a negative, negative 7, seven coefficient. Yeah. I like it. Is that cool? Same yeah, 132 is the exact same instructions, but is that one term or more? It's two terms, so therefore do what the instructions say. It's so not It's not write, one term. The answer is no. Because the question is, uh, determine whether your expression is a term. And x minus 7, is it a term? x minus 7 is... How many terms? Two. Two terms. So the answer to the question is no, you're done. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. I have a question. In, in the test, uh, I can do the uh, equation, in, for example, in one state or two states. Is that good for you, or you need to see all the states? I don't need to see every single step. But the main uh, one? But what I get sometimes <laughs> is like on a order operations problem or something, somebody will do... Uh, just to make some so many do the first step sort of they'll say okay that's negative two squared is four and then the next line is the answer uh, uh, uh no no oh, okay. right because then you just plug the damn thing in your calculator give me a break okay. right so there will be some tests or quizzes where i will not let you use the calculator 
So you kind of have to know how to do it without. Right. So this kind of thing, don't you got to show me enough work to make the connection. Mm -hmm. Don't just let the calculator do the work for you, because then the calculator passes Math 9 and you stay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, all right. Anything else? Which problems have we not done yet? We almost got all the homework. All right, cool. Uh, let's get back into chapter two. And I'm going to start to use this bad boy here a little bit. I'm going to put it up on the overhead just to get us into the groove of how this is going to work. <clears throat> I'm going to be on page, uh, let's see, page five to start with. I'm going to jump in the middle of this thing. Page five. Oh, I don't know. So if you don't have the yellow cover, I don't know if it's the same thing. We'll see. You guys with me? How many of you can play along? So get that book as soon as you can. It's like the cheapest book you'll ever get for college. No, I know. I'm going to put it up here. Yes. So if we get the uh, next by itself, if we're going into the second part of this course next semester, we would most likely need to buy math lab for next semester, correct? It depends on who you take. Okay. So, for example, if I go ahead and buy the math lab for next semester, that's going to be used for example and not have that code and next semester comes around and I need that code. You can buy the code by itself. And the code is good for more than just one semester, so you can hold on to it if you got it. But not every teacher uses it, and when I teach courses with my math lab, I make it optional, because I know some students don't like it, and personally, I don't know how I feel about it either. I can't stand it. Good. So then find a teacher that doesn't use it. But that's really not actually needed. Yes, it is. You, you, can, you can determine, you can look at their syllabi and see if they use it or not. Oh, all right. Well, then, hopefully. So I'm, I'll just go ahead and buy that, and it'll be good for next year, even though we're not using it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> cool. In fact, if you sign up for Mad Math Lab Courts, it, it should be good for a year after you've put that code in through Pearson. Does that make sense? So, yes. yeah, even if you, you know, well, I don't have a course up there, but, yeah, you could use it. You could even use it now, and it's still good for next semester. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, all right, guys, so let's do this. Here, go ahead and try to do three and four, and then we're going to do some with fractions in them because you know they exist. So if you don't have the book, it's up here. Just to let you guys know, I, I am teaching 110 in the summer. So if you if you like the way I teach, you can take me in 110. If you want to take 110 over the summer, if you don't like the way I teach, you can just wait. Uh, somebody else is teaching 110 in the summer too. But I like I, you know when I teach 110, I make my math lab optional, so you don't have to use it. Uh, if you want to take 103 every next, day? I don't know who's teaching in the summer. Every day in summer, every day. As uh, uh, summers like Monday through Thursday and for the, six weeks. The time. The time? I, I, I think it starts at 11. We just we just made the schedule now. I, I can barely keep spring schedule straight in my head right now. So I think I start at 11. I like, I like to take it, but I have problem. I, I have uh, I am working. Yes, I understand. Time, so yeah, so they have an earlier class, but I don't teach it. Yeah. 
All right, let's look at that first, the, the number three. That you guys should be done with that one, I think, right? Yes. <laughs> so this, you get to this stage a lot when you solve equations. You have Bs and numbers on both sides, but there's no like terms on each side. So what do you do now? What's the next step? Um, 2B plus 7B mi uh, minus 6 minus 4. To add minus 4. Um, so what exactly do I do next? Now, now what I normally do is uh, I, I personally try to keep the variable term positive yeah. so I don't make a negative mistake. So what would I do to do that? Sure, so be very specific for me. Subtract 2B, I like I like I'm the one who will be vague in this class. You guys be specific. Is that cool? Now you can subtract 7B, it's not a problem. Now you can do that, but then you're going to have a negative and then negatives. I know math really well, but anytime I can stay away from having a negative show up, I will, because I know it's really easy to make a mistake. So that goes away, I have 4 equals... 5B minus 6, cool. And then, of course, I do add 6, move the numbers the other way. So I get 10 equals 5B, cool. I like it. Divide by 5, B is 2. I like it. Are you guys cool with that? 2 equals b, so therefore b equals 2. It doesn't matter. I just like to put the variable on that side, right? All right, cool. Everybody should have been good with that. That should be easy. Number 4 is not that horrible. What, what's the first step you got to use here? Distribute. Good. So 18 minus 6x. Good. Equals 18 minus 12x. Now, right there, you should realize something freaky is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, if you get your, uh, yeah, this is this is where you got to be careful because people freak out here. You don't let the problem tell you what to do. It, it's, it's the stupid problem. We're the humans. We tell the problem what the hell we got to do. So I got to move the numbers together. If they cancel, big freaking deal. And then I still have to get the X's together. That's what people freak out. So right here they say get the numbers together. And then you get here and you're like, what the hell's that shit? And you divide and do weird shit. Have you gotten your X's together yet? Are your X's together? Are your X's on one side? No. no. So do that. You know you're supposed to do that. Just because the 18's went away doesn't change the process. So how do I get my X's together? Subtract 6X. Oh, add 6X, sorry. Yeah, you could add 6X. You could add, well, let's go ahead and add 6X. So what do I get here? Zero. Zero. Good. Zero equals? Negative 6X. Negative 6X. And this still freaks people out too, but big deal that's a zero. I know I want to get the x by itself, so I divide by what's with it. It's not by itself because of the negative six. Divide by negative six. Zero divided by anything is zero. 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 So x equals zero? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and that x equals zero does not mean there's no solution. It means zero is the answer, right? Poor little zero, dude. I know it gives us problems, but it's a valid answer. If x were zero, does this work? If x is zero, you get three times six is 18 minus nothing. Two times nine is 18 minus nothing. 18 equals 18? Yes. And that's true, so zero works. I like it. Cool. If it was something over zero, that would have been so Undefined, <laughs> right? So, yes? Could you have done the, um, put the letters together first? Totally. And that would have kind of uh, alleviated a little weirdness. Yeah. So that's, uh, maybe that's a good thing to do in general is get your variables together first. But the 18s were just screaming out to me, we want to die. Oh, no, right, 18s. Go ahead and die. But yeah, if you get your letters together first, you don't run into the weirdness here. Beautiful. All you did, you added 12x instead of yeah. adding 6x. Yeah. When you divide by 6, you still get 0. So your intermediate steps could be very different from somebody else's. But if you're both doing it right, you should end up at the same place. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Okay, uh, real quick word. Uh, 0 divided by anything. This means if I have zero money and I got seven people, including myself, how much do we each get? 
Nothing. Yeah. Zero. Yeah, so that's why zero divided by anything is zero, except you can't divide by zero. But so this way, this is zero. Why is this undefined? Well, here's the weird shit. If I had seven bucks and there were there was nobody, not even me, okay, that's undefined. What the hell? If you're not there, who's got the seven bucks? Me. I don't know if you guys get what I'm saying. That's why it's a weird situation. I can't describe it physically. I have seven dollars, but I'm not there. <laughs> Figure that shit out. That's why that's another way to look at that is that's why that's undefined. All right, maybe. I know it's a little weird, but it's true. It's, it's another way to look at that. So this answer is perfectly fine. X is zero. So I don't know what you guys know about fractions. How do I? They pretty much tell you what to do here, but that equation looks way worse than the other ones did because of all the divisions of four. Right? That's why there's fractions is because there's division. But what am I allowed to do with an equation? That's really nice. I can do what to both sides of an equation? I can multiply both sides. I can add both sides. I can subtract the same thing. Yeah, so what's going to help me? If, if both sides are being divided by 4, what am I going to do to both sides to kill that? Multiply, multiply by 4. So if I multiply everything by 4, what happens? Those fours cancel, so what am I left with here? Negative x. Negative x, I like it. Those fours cancel, so I'm left with five. plus 5 equals Three. those fours cancels, and then that looks Much awesome. Easier. Yeah. That was easy. Why was that one relatively easy? Because all the bottoms were four. four. They're all the same. So if they're not the same, what do you think you do first? You, you make them the same, so and then you the do the same, same thing. thing. So, so to finish this one out real quick, what do I, what would I do next here? Subtract five. So get negative x <coughs> equals negative two. Negative two. Then you would divide by negative one. Good. There's an understood negative one there, right? So the last thing you do almost always is divide by that coefficient. So then you would get x equals two. Bam. So why is number six going to be just a little bit harder to start with? Three has a different yeah, what's three got underneath it right now? One. All right, so what do you do? Let me write it a little bit so i got some more room. What do you do to make it have the same? Multiply by, by five. Yeah, cool. All right, so try it. Do that first and then try to do the same thing we just did on the previous problem. What? Why? No? You don't want to? What do you mean it won't yes, work? Yes, it will. Never mind. All right. Sorry, it went right over my head. That's right. Don't worry. So you got to first multiply that 3 over 1 by 5 over 5, and then try to do like this, what we just did on the one before. It'll, it'll work the exact same way. Don't worry. Just hang on. Were you okay with the one before, with the fours? No. Oh, well, that's when you have to ask me. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so so let me go back a step here. Let me make sure. So on this problem, real quick, before we do this one, let me do another one that's kind of set up the same way this one is. If I had uh, 3x over 7 minus 2 over 7 equals I don't know, 7 over 7, What could I do immediately? Multiply, Multiply everything by 7. Is that cool? Okay. Now, some of you guys realize this is not the only way you can do this, but this is a nice way to do I could immediately kill the fraction so I don't make a fraction mistake. Why exactly am I allowed to multiply by 7 here? I can't always do that when I have fractions, but I can here because it's inside of an... There's two... Oh. Sides, so um, it balances out. If that wasn't there, I could never multiply by seven. I I would just put those together because they have like denominators. I could not get rid of the bottom. <laughs> All right. That was neat. That was an interesting remark. All right, but since that equal sign is there, I'm allowed to multiply both sides by anything I want to. And the smart thing to multiply here is seven, because the reason it looks ugly is all the divisions of seven. So if I multiply, now let me make sure you guys understand why I could put it next to each If I multiply this side by 7, what would I do with the 7? Distribute it. Right? So I could just put it next to each term right off the bat. 
So what happens to all the sevens? This seven cancels that seven. This seven cancels that seven. This seven cancels that seven. So don't actually make this 21. There's no reason to. It's dead. The seven's dead. So what's left in this first term? 3x, 3x minus 2. Minus 2 equals 7. seven. All right, let me stop there. Is everybody cool with that first step? Mm -hmm. If the bottoms are the same, let it be easy, the first step. You can kill all the fractions, and then it looks a lot nicer, right? If the bottoms aren't the same, what do you do? You, you make them the same. You should know how to make LCDs, right? Uh, so then, and then you'd add two. So the next equals three. Oh, I like That's a three. All right, how are we doing? Good. I did that quick at the end because that was an easy little equation, right? So here, number six, how do you make this that's not going? That's not in line with everybody else? So how do you make them get in line? By five. five, by five. So now I've got negative 2r over 5 plus 15 over 5 equals 1 over 5. So what can I do? Uh, multiply by 5. Yeah. All the bottoms are the same. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I need to make all the bottoms the same. Exactly. I gave that 3 over 1. I multiplied it by a version of 1. So I didn't do anything, did I? So people sometimes people will say, well, you did something to that side, but you didn't do anything to that. I didn't do a damn thing to that side. 15 over 5 is the same as 3. I just made it look different. Now, who, who had a question? I'm sorry. Is that fine? Is that fine to keep it? Just the same thing. If you divide by 5, just keep 3. Well, the, why did I do this, though? Because now what can I do? I can multiply both sides by 5. Now, real quick word, real quick. Did I have to do this? I could have multiplied by 5 to begin with, but there is a method to my madness. When we get to the point where there are variable expressions like x minus 7 on the bottom, if you understand what I'm doing here, those will be so much easier. You're going to want to do what we're doing here. There's other ways to do this problem, but I really want to get us ready for when it gets a little uglier. Right? Yes? Is there going to be another problem? Because I think I know what she's asking. And so, like, for example, if it, let's say it was 5, 2, and 5, to make them all the same. Yeah, good. I think the next I one think, on the next okay, page, I, I think. Say, yeah, I yeah. think that's what she's asking. Because right now it's easy. Cause it's, it's easy. One. Well, we want to start easy, so let it get hard. Okay. And when we get there, we'll, we'll see what happens. So now, what can I do? Kill, kill the... Are you okay? <laughs> what's up? What's up? So far, is it okay, or what's up? <laughs> Well, just wait till we get to a little harder one, and then I think your question, like she said, will become more applicable. So if you multiply each piece by 5, because that kills the part that's making this look ugly. So those go away. Those go away. Those go away. And now that looks really nice, right? What do I do to solve that? Uh, minus, uh, subtract, yeah, subtract 15. 15, 15. Yeah. So again, negative 2r equals... Uh, 14. Let me stop there for a second. Is that all right? And then the last step is? And I get R equals positive 7. Good. All right, so let's try the next one. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, yeah, the next one's a little more interesting. All right, there's a lot of room on this. So go ahead and try something. <laughs> And we'll see if what you try is correct. If it ain't, you got plenty of room to write the right way. Just make sure you guys don't make a common mistake. The big mistake is to forget the poor little 2R. So always make sure everything, even your whole numbers, put them over 1 so you don't forget they need the LCD also. That's right.
Okay, done. Uh. Is that right? Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Sorry, I just haven't done it. It's okay. <coughs> Alright, so obviously what's the L C D? Six. 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 So this dude doesn't need anything. That's nice for him. What's this guy need? Six. Six. What's this guy need? Uh, what's he need? Three. 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 What's this guy need? Two. Two. We haven't done anything. We haven't done a damn thing at all. We just made them look different, right? But we put them in a more useful form. Let me just go ahead and make this 3R over 6. Is that cool? 3R over 6? Yeah. 32 over 6. Now, some of you guys might realize you could just basically cross all the 6s out now, right? And that's effectively what happens. Be really careful when you start doing that. you got to realize what the hell you're doing. You're doing multiplying by six everything. That's why all the sixes end up canceling. Because you did the same thing to both sides. Now I'm actually doing something. I actually multiplied both sides by six. Why the first time both of them get multiplied, but then the second time you only have to cross them out? Like how come, how come right here if you don't do 30 over, why isn't it 30 R, negative 30 R? What's on the bottom of this one already? I, I get that part. I get that they cancel the length. No, 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 no. Does it? I, I don't. So, so if you understand, if you understand that these cancel, is there a six left to multiply to the five? No. No. So why would it become thirty? Oh, because I, you know what? Because I have a hard time understanding that too. Because if you when you add those sixes, technically it's a six over one, and it's multiplied by the other fraction, right? So you would cross it out. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that helps. If you write it like that, is that helping? In my mind. Okay. Sure. 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 But, I mean, you could do it one of two ways. You don't want to do something <coughs> both ways at once. But you could have done 6 times 5 over 6R. You could have said, okay, that's negative 30 over 6R. But what, right? You could multiply these and multiply those. But what's negative 30 divided by 6? 5. Negative 5. Right? So I'd rather kill the things... And not worry about multiplying, make these big ass numbers that I don't need. Well, 30 is not big ass, but it's bigger than it had to be. Cool. I like it. So yeah, if you if you if writing it as six over one or whatever over one helps, you can see the how it's working. That's cool. That works beautifully. So then, what am I left with? Negative five r plus twelve r equals three r plus thirty two. All right, we all saw that. So if, again, effectively, all the sixes just went away because we multiplied and they were divided. So of course they cancel. Uh, and now it's now it's relatively easy, right? Seven R. Careful. What's the next thing I would do? Uh, oh, right here. Yeah, you yeah, can put those together. I'm sorry. Seven yeah. R. Seven R. Equals three R plus thirty-two. Now seven R plus twelve R equals three R plus thirty-two. Cool. Yeah. I like it. 4R equals 32, over 4, over 4. Yeah. So obviously the last thing we do almost always is divide by the coefficient. Cool. So R is 8. Good. Is that all right? So that's how you can do. Now, you can, now if I gave you, I said, what is uh, 5 sevenths minus 3 tenths? You could not multiply. You couldn't make them both 70 and multiply by 70. Right? Why can't I get rid of the fractions here? No equal sign. There's no equal sign. There's no two sides to balance each other out, right? I like it. Otherwise, one half plus one half would be two. That's neat. Fifty cents, fifty cents, two dollars. No, sorry. Does not work that way. I've tried. All right. Okay. So, so. Uh, oh, well, I can't remember if we talked about. I think we did a problem like this. Uh, but I want to make sure you guys see the other way. We did a problem that had no solution. Remember that? So I want to do one only, problem. Only one, one, no solution. Exactly. I want to do one where it's not quite, if something weird still happens, but you get a different answer. So this very first one, what would I do first here? Yeah, I'm sorry. On the next page, page seven. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm sorry, halfway down. Yeah. Uh, distribute. So what do you get? You get 2x minus x minus y. So over here I get All right there, that's kind of like hello. But officially, how would you do the next step? How do you get your x's together? Plus x. If you add, that doesn't cancel it. Subtract. You got to subtract it to cancel it, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it cancels. Not really. Unfortunately, this is easy now. This is less Zero. to do. No. Zero well, zeros. so you get negative five equals negative five. Oh, right. When is that true? Is it only true on every other Thursday? It's always freaking true. So what's the answer? True. All real numbers. The answer's got to, you got to tell me, what's the answer normally for an equation? A number, right? A number that works. Here, no matter, now watch, the variable disappears, so it doesn't matter what you make x equal, because it would go away anyway. That's why the answer is any number you want. Any number you want will make this work. Does that make sense? Yes. So certainly, I mean, very easily you could say, you know, when does x plus 2, when is that the same thing as x plus 1 plus 1? When is that the same? Well, it's always the same. What are you talking about? There's no specific values of x that make it work. It works no matter what you make x, right? So that's sort of like what that equation was. It was kind of like, well, yeah, that's always freaking true, dude. So what's the answer officially? All real numbers. You say an infinite number, I might be okay with that, but... If we leave it without words, it's okay with you? That's not no. good. That's I have to see the answer. And telling me that negative five equals negative five is not an answer. It's a, it's a like, oh, oh wow, you know, you got to tell me what that means if you interpret it. That means the equation is true no matter what. So if I get negative five equals negative four, no solution. No matter what x is, it can't save that equation's ass. But negative five equals negative five, it doesn't care what x is. It's always true. It doesn't need x to help. So let the x go away. I always have people that subtract x and somehow it's still there. Because your brain is like, I need x. No, you don't. Let it go away and then interpret the answer, right? You save x. It's so noble, I know. Come on, x. Come on, x. Don't die. Uh, let's see. All right, we'll do number two, and then we're going to get into some word problems. And we're going to we're going to stop at about eight thirty, I think, and, and go on a little field trip. Uh, of the we didn't do that yesterday. Really? No. Uh, too many classes. Good. All right, I did it a couple times already yesterday. But we will get into word problems today. Yeah, exactly. So you still, zero is always zero. So it's still all numbers. Yeah. So I just didn't do the step. I didn't add five to both sides. But your answer is the same as mine. Because what you got is always true, like what I got. So you're in I just write two or? No, 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 no. That's not an answer. The solution, what what x values work? All real numbers work. So that's the answer. If you write true, I'm like, what does that mean? It, that's not telling me what I can use for x. No solution? All right, let's see what happens. Some of you guys got something. So, of course, what do you have to do first? So you get 4x. Plus eight. Plus eight. Minus four. Minus four x. Minus six. Minus six. Good. Negative two times three. So four x's do what they cancel, right? Please, dear God, I, I saw this on somebody's work. This does not make any sense. You see that plus four x plus four. You see it? Don't even write that down. Please, dear God. You would only do something like that to both sides of the equation. The four x's are already together. They're on one side. You don't have to move them to the other side. Just put them together and they die. Right? And then what's eight minus six? So I like, I heard somebody back there say two equals 10. Well, obviously it's not true. It's not what math is trying to say. Math is not able to communicate with us. So this is the best way it can say what? No solution. That's the only way it can say. Dude, if that equation works, then 2 equals 10. And we're like, oh, 2 doesn't equal 10. Shit, no solution. Wow. 
All right, I lock it. So it's hard to check these. Once again, the answer is the thing I circled. Not a true statement, and it is not a solution for the problem. No, 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 no. There is no solution to the problem. That's okay. the answer. But the two equals ten is an untrue statement. And that's why there is no solution. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's take a step into some word problems. I know. I know. And I, to be honest, one reason that students dislike word problems is because sometimes they're silly. I love the problem where the guy forgot how much money he put into his bank account. I'm like, I wish I had that problem. Oh yeah, was it ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars? Who are you, right? Uh, but it almost has to be that way because the the amount of math we know is as much as the problem's difficulty can be, right? And the real world it requires a little bit more advanced math because there's a lot of other shit going on. So it, it, the word problems, unfortunately for us, are, are going to be a little bit contrived sometimes, just so we can get used to translating. Just like when you first take a foreign language. You start to translate these words and you start making these sentences and very often they're like they barely make any sense. Right? My name is Jeff. I like white cars. I, you know, what the hell? What? But you're just getting used to the translations. It's the same thing with math. Um, so, let me see if I can make this point. All right. Let's try a very straightforward... This is barely even a word problem, but it's just getting into translations. Um, one number is four more than twice another. All right, so this already sounds familiar, right? Like, uh, I can't believe this. But let's go. One number is four more than twice another number. Their sum, I guess I should make it work, let's see. Is 28. What are the numbers? So let me make this point again. I think I made this point before, but I think I said something about driving school. Did I, did I do that with you guys yet? Uh, I think maybe that was my intercession. If you're taking a driving class and I ask you, all right, I want you to drive to the mall just to prove to me you can drive well, all right, drive to the mall, and you get out of the car and you walk to the mall. And you're like, I'm at the mall. Are you going to get a passing grade? No. No. no, because you got to the mall, didn't you? You got to where I asked you to get to. But did you get there the right way? So do you understand my point? If you get the answer but you didn't use algebra, you're going to lose all or close to all the points and people get upset they're like i got the right answer but what class are we in i'm in freaking algebra class so i know the word problem sometimes will be easy and you can think about the answer you know the answer that's awesome you know the answer so when you do the algebra like you're supposed to you know what the answer should be right so i really want you to understand that it's nice that you get the right answer that's awesome bless you in the real world you don't have to use algebra but in the real world algebra sometimes is the best way to do some problems and I don't know if you believe me, and I don't care because it's true. Yeah. So is the question asking blank plus blank plus four, or? Well, let's figure it out. I like this. So the idea of the blanks, of course, Alger says we don't like the blanks, but we're, so we just make them X's. Yeah, yeah. But we have to kind of work our way to it. I think one reason people do word problems and they're bad at it is because you guys think you're supposed to be able to get the equation after one reading of the problem. That's insane. That is insane. So here's how this works. Those of you that follow this advice will make fewer mistakes. Um, how many parts to this problem are there? Like, are there 18 numbers involved? How many numbers are involved in this problem? Three, three, four. How many numbers? Two. They do something together, but how many actual numbers are there? Two. Two. There are two numbers. Four, 28. What did I call them? No, no, no. What did I call the numbers in English? The first step of a word problem is English. I call them one number, right? So the first step is how many players and what names did I use in English? The first step is all English. Don't bring the numbers in yet. Don't bring the math in yet. Yeah, the other one, yeah. Uh, another. I love it. 
I really want you with me on this because the reason you want to use the exact same words I used is so they can always go back and see where things came from. Mm -hmm. If you call them uh, number one and number two, you're like, you, you can't, I don't say anything about number one and number two. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to see where things came from. Are you guys yeah. with me so far? Okay. What's up? Sorry. Yes? Okay. Alex said no. Everything what? All right. Uh, now, the next important step. Twice. No, no. The next important step is which one is just X? Because very often what students will do, don't, don't write this. They'll look at this whole thing and they'll say four more than twice is 28, and then they'll solve it and they'll get a number which is completely wrong. It's a completely wrong answer. Because your brain goes right for the four more than twice and you think everything's, you're like, look at that, I'm using algebra. But how many numbers are in your equation? One. How many numbers are there? Two. Shit. In fact, you can't even write this until you call what x. Which number do you have to know first? One number is four more than twice another. So do you have to know the one number first or the another number first? Another. The another. If I told you the, the another number was seven, then what would this be? It would be twice seven. 14 plus 4. You have to know this one first. So let me stop there because that's the remarkably, almost the most important step in a word problem is what is just X? Because it's what everything else is built on. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A little bit. All right. All right. So you've got to figure out. All right. So this guy is what this guy depends. He is blah, blah, blah. Okay, crap. i got to know him. If I call him X, then I can write what is four more than twice that? Well, what's twice this? Twice. And what's four more than that? Plus four. four. That's where that would come from. But now you see both numbers. So this is really all about. Can you see what? Yeah. All right. This is all about translation. English, and now I've translated all the English here into Mathish, right? That's why math is hard because it's, it is a foreign language. Right? MSL. You're an MSL. Math is a second language. So now what are these two numbers supposed to do? When you do what with them? Because you could have said the difference is 28 and then it would have been the subtraction of the two, right? So when you take this number and you add it to this number, you get 28. So you can see the mistake this person made. They don't have both numbers. That They're saying one number is 28 all by itself. No, it ain't. Both numbers added together make 28, so you better make sure you get both numbers represented. How are we doing? What's up? Yeah, I was going to say, like, because you actually, like, read, read out the, uh, the equation. Yeah. No. So, so uh, one number added to another number is 28. That's okay. effectively what it says, right? So uh, one number added to another number gives you 28. So I can read equations, I can translate them into English directly. But um, if we make the equation in another way, one number, x, is more for uh, four more uh, than twi uh, twice no uh, another. So x plus four plus two to x, right? No? Well, no. Because if you call this guy X, you'd have to work backwards to figure out what this guy is. But addition, we can... Uh, no, no, I know it, but yeah. it's important that you make... Uh, because when I start having three or more things happening in each, you've got to start with which one is X, and everything else builds on that. Mm -hmm. You have to be... And, and then the answer to the question, if I say Bill, Bob, and Fred, and you just kind of give anybody X, then you're going to think your answer is for Fred, when really it's for Bob. Mm -hmm. But here, if, when I solve this, which one am I going to figure out when I solve that equation? Let's solve the equation first. What, what do we get when we solve this? Oh, right? So then, divide by 3? So which number is 8? X. Another. The, another number another is 8. Number. So right now, it's almost silly, right? We're just two freaking numbers. Who cares? But if it's Bob, Fred, and Bill, and I'm trying to figure out how much money they get, and I say Fred gets $200, when it really should be Bob getting $200, and Fred should get $700, Fred's going to freaking be angry. I, I really, because that's what you're saying. You're, you're kind of like giving X to whoever, but you, the X has got to be a specific something so that I know when I get this answer, I know exactly which one it is. Right? 
Because you're paying all these people, and you're just like, uh, somebody gets 200, you. Uh, I think they're going to be upset if they're really owed $1,000. They're going to be a little upset. Mm -hmm. You guys get my point. So this, that's why it's so important to use the same words I use and figure out who's just X first. Good, so X, X is 8. So that number is 8. So what number is this? 16. Yes, well, twice 8 plus 4. That's what that number is, right? X is 8, so X is 8. So twice 8 is? 16. Plus 4? 20. How do you check your work? Plug it in. Plug it in. No, plug it in. Watch. What are the two numbers supposed to do? 20 plus 8 is? There you go. It's really easy to solve word problems as long as you got all the parts identified for yourself. Could you make it a different variable or it doesn't have to be X? It doesn't have to be X. It could even be a happy face. No, I mean, like, can one of them be X and the other one be Y? Could yes, but then you're adding another layer of complexity. Did I need two variables? Did I need two variables? No. If you start saying like there's two variables, you feel like there's more stuff you don't know. But whatever this number is, that number is built on it. We will get to the point where we have to use two variables. So like, for example, real quick, since you brought it up, uh, you don't know either of our ages, right? But if I told you that our ages add to be uh, 60, right? Could be true. <laughs> then... Uh, do you, do you know either of our ages yet? No. Do you see what I'm saying? So I have to give you, so if I have two things I don't know, I need two pieces of information to figure it out. So that's when we get the system of equations. That's later. Don't make yourself think that that's what this is. You don't need two variables here. You actually could do it that way, but it's just extra work. Because when we took the 88, when we have two unknown numbers, so we use X and Y. No, like I said, you could do it that way, but it makes it more complicated than it has to be. Will I stop you from making things more complicated? I'll try. If you get the answer right and you do it that way, fine. But maybe you took extra time than you really needed and you run out of time on the test, right? You don't need to introduce a second variable. There's no need for it. But if you like doing it that way, feel free. Because it'll, it's still math, it's still algebra, it'll still work. It'll just take a little longer. Maybe. You still look at me like, yeah. like I just said, do it either way. I don't care. All right. I'm trying to save you time. Um, let's do one that's uh, uh, geometric. Boogie boogie. What do I mean by that? Like a triangle. So let's say, um, well, I got a problem here, but let me do a different one. 